Hello, everyone. Welcome to our third Monday meeting. Uh, today, we have Arminino. We have uh, three of their professionals here to talk about effective interviewing, which is going to be uh, a really good resource to learn right now uh, during our networking opportunities and events coming up. So if you could, please uh, turn on your cameras for our professionals. They like to see your faces while they're talking to you, and they would greatly appreciate it. Um, and then I just have a few announcements, and Isaac's going to take it away on that. All right. So for this week, on Tuesday, we have our final session for Meet the Firms. And this time, the firms are going to be private industry and government. So make sure to RSVP for those uh, one-on-ones uh, with professionals before it's too late. It'll be from 4 to 7. Then on Sunday, we have our karaoke night, AA karaoke night. Which mm -hmm. This semester, or yeah, this semester is going to be uh, virtual. So it's going to be very interesting to see how everything is going to work. Oh, there's also going to be a special giveaway. So be on the lookout for that. Awesome. So uh, I'm going to pass it over to our professionals to get it get started with the presentation, and I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing my screen, and I hope this works fine. So, okay, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, looks okay. good. Okay. Yes. Oh, no. I can't see you guys again, so hold on. Okay. Cool. Now I see it. All right. So you guys don't see my notes page, right? I hate when people do that. <laughs> you just see the presentation. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, we are presenting on effective interviewing, which is very timely because application deadlines have ended or are ending soon, and you guys will be entering the interview phase. So we hope you get a lot out of this. So all right, who, who are we? Who is presenting? So we're going to do a quick introduction of our presenters. So my name is Kara Williams. I'm the Southern California campus recruiter, and I newly started covering Seattle, which is fun and exciting. So um, I have been a recruiter and working at Armino a little bit over a year. Prior to that, I was a tax accountant at another mid-firm, mid-tier firm for four years. I also did an audit internship. I worked in business management while I was at CISA, and I've kind of like done it all and I've been exactly where you guys are. Um, like I said, I went to CISA and I was in the accounting program and I am based in Los Angeles. I'm mostly in West LA, but I go to Irvine and Woodland Hills and downtown LA, so kind of all over. So Ken, I will kick it over to you. Hey everybody, my name is Ken Teasdale. I'm an audit partner here at Armanino. I've uh, been with the firm about five years by way of merger. My old firm is what created the Woodland Hills office here at the firm. Um, I am a CSUN alum, very proud, go Matador Nation. Um, I have a couple expertise uh, in the audit world, uh, both in nonprofit audits, public charities and private foundations in particular, and have started uh, as of a couple years ago, uh, completely 180, um, starting our cannabis practice in the audit department in, in our firm. So that's been very exciting and challenging. And I am Drew. Um, I'm in the West LA office. I'm on the real estate tax team as a senior. Been with Armenino for a year and a half. Um, when I was recruiting, I ended up going to another firm initially. And after a few years, I wasn't feeling as fulfilled. And I had a buddy who I studied with CSUN at tell me to come over to Armenino. And I came and we're having a great time. Um, also from CSUN, like I said. And um, it's great to be here with all of you. Thanks, Drew. Okay, yeah, so uh, that's Tara, it. Tara. Those are professionals presenting. Tara, can yeah. I also mention, there's this like gray block on the right. I don't know if anybody else is seeing this. It's kind yeah. of covering a little bit of the presentation. I yeah, think it might be our faces, but it wasn't there before the when we tried it out. Yeah, so uh, uh, are you able I don't to know if it'll be manageable, oh, wait, just FYI. If you can move that panel, do you have another ah. screen, Tara? You can push it to another screen. Yeah, let me move it over. Is that good? Still see, there, there we go. There it is, yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, yeah. all right, well, that's weird because now I see you guys on my other screen, but you know, we'll, we'll just make it happen, it'll be okay. <laughs> um, I want to be able to see your faces, but it's all good. So, 
All right. What are we talking about today? So I'm going to, a lot of you guys already have heard my spiel about Armenino, but for those of you that don't know, I just want to give a little bit of some firm facts, and then we're going to dive into the meat of the presentation, talk about how to prepare for the interview, once you get into the interview, how to ace it, and then what to do afterwards. So with that, we will talk about getting to know Armenino. So um, we are actually based in Southern California. We are the largest CPA-based um, accounting consulting firm. So we have over 1,500 employees. We're growing really rapidly. Um, if you care about numbers and rankings, we are in the top 25. We are number 22. And we do, we started as just audit and tax, but we do much more than that. So we do um, a large par portion of our practice is consulting. We also do risk assurance and advisory and more recently blockchain. So where are we located? A lot of people ask me this. Um, so our blue dots denote where our offices are. So we are on the West Coast, but expanding more east. We also have employees in the orange section, so kind of all over. We have some remote employees, um, and we have clients where those yellow dots are, so also all over the nation. So I also wanted to share, these are our PVAs. So this is our purpose, values, and our anchors. And why this is so important is this is what we use to really, like this is who we are, and this is what we use in all of our decision making. So when we decide who we're gonna hire, who we're gonna promote, who we're gonna merge with, this is what we lean on. And what I love about Armanino is that they don't just say these things, they actually are true. And they have um, processes in place so that these really come to life. So I wanted each of us to just share one of these that really touches us and that we have a personal example of. So um, I can go first, but for me, I love Empowered and I see that for sure all the time in my own role. So mine is different than what you guys would do when you come in as, as a tax or audit or consulting um, associate. But um, I'm really encouraged to speak my mind, think of new ideas, push the envelope, like um, make change happen, change the internship, change the summer leadership program. And I love that because every year it's different. Like every year students want something different. And um, I love that we're not encouraged to stay the same, which also kind of goes with innovation and entrepreneurialism. So I love that. But Ken or Drew, do you guys want to chime in on one that you see a lot? Uh, yeah, um, all of these PVAs, it's pretty cool. Like we have this part of our firm on the website where it's called High Ground. And basically someone can give someone else a shout out for relating or identifying with one of one or more of these values. And the whole firm could see that you were recognized on this job for doing something that stood out to them. Um, the one in particular I like is positive energy because really there's a lot of stressful times when you're dealing with, you know, all the workload and like clients and all the types of, you know, there are challenges and you overcome, but to have a positive attitude is really important because it really helps manage it a lot better when everybody else around you is feeling positive. So I like that one. Yep, absolutely. I'll, I'll chime in on the uh, anchors, at least from a partner standpoint, entrepreneurialism. That's a big deal for me. I was concerned coming from a smaller firm, merging in with Armanino at the time was 800 people and you know, less than a, probably 85 partners were double that now. Um, I was worried I was gonna get swallowed up in a big corporate machine, lose all the autonomy that I used to have uh, and have to you know, follow a guideline. I'm a VP in a bank now, you know what I mean? That has not been the case at all. I run my own book. I run my own business, so to speak, and I get the full resources of the firm. And they allow me to be as entrepreneurial as possible. And that is incredibly empowering and helpful as a, you know, you still feel like a business owner and, it, and it's awesome. Oops. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Sorry, Ken. <laughs> I wasn't like, <clears throat> that wasn't the cue. My bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks, Ken. I appreciate you sharing that from a partner standpoint. So, um, yeah, sorry about that. My mouse clicked. So, um, yeah, we, Ken, did you have anything else to say? I feel like I cut you off. <laughs> no, not at all. I was, I was finishing up. All good. Okay. Sweet. 
All right, so yeah, that's a little bit about us, but now we just wanna dive into preparing for the interview, so how to help you prepare. So you guys know this, I'm sure, because you have built your resume and shared it at Meet the Firms, but I just want to give a reminder that your resume is really important even during the interview. So at the top, you wanna have your contact information, your first and last name, phone number, and a professional email address. So um, maybe like, not baby boo one two three at yahoo.com we want to make it like first last name um at gmail or something um keep it professional so also you don't have to put your address i i'm seeing that recently um i think that was because like we would have addresses so that people would know where to send your offer letter by mail but now we send it through email so i think if you just put the city and state you reside in that's okay so if you are from LA and you want to stay in LA, I would put, for example, in Northridge, California. But if you're for, from the Bay Area, for example, and you want to move back there, I would maybe put like San Jose, California, just so that they kind of know, okay, they're looking to go back to the Bay Area. Also under that, I would have education. Do so you want to have the degree you're pursuing, any minors or double majors that you have, and also your expected graduation date. And in bold, I put expected CPA eligibility date if applicable. So um, not all of our positions require being CPA eligible, but for the ones that do, so audit and tax um, and business management, please put your CPA eligibility because that is what we base your eligibility for the position off of. So you also want to put your major and cumulative GPA. Um, also, and even if like some people are like, well, what if my, my GPA is under 3.0? It doesn't matter. I would still put it on there because if you don't, it looks kind of like sketchy. So I would just put it on there. And if it's below a 3.0, you know, because usually we look for 3.0 and higher, just bring it up in the interview and just say, you know, I have a child that I have to take care of or a sick parent, or I had a rough start because of this, this, and this. And we're pretty flexible with that. So definitely put it on there. Also under that, I would put work experience. So part-time, full-time jobs, internships, et cetera, and include a date range for those. And I like to include a leadership and award section um, this is for involvement with on-campus clubs, organizations, athletic teams, uh, fraternities, sororities, volunteering, etc. cetera. Um, and also I would put your academic or other awards. So if you guys receive an award from the awards banquet, this is where it could go. Also, I used to be really anti-skills and interests. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but I was like, this is so lame. But now I have had a change of heart and I think that it is really good, especially in the virtual setting because I feel like, you know, skills, usually I put like Microsoft Office and then parentheses, I put like Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera. And then you guys learn accounting softwares in school from what I remember. So feel free to include those there too. And your interests are kind of nice because the interviewer is going to review your resume before and maybe they'll be like, oh, I'm into soccer. And Ken's like, oh, I know exactly what to talk about with him or her because I know he's a soccer fan. So, or it, it doesn't even need to be something that they can relate to. It could just be, I love to travel or something. And just that gives them a little nugget of like who you are other than just an accounting student. And have as many professionals review your resume as possible. So go to the networking workshop, have Stuart review it, have other professionals review it because you'll get different insight and know what to take with a grain of salt, or maybe you'll see patterns of what you should change and improve on. All right, so how do we prepare for the interview? So the first three are just kind of like basic, maybe common sense, but I think this is really important because what I tend to do before interviews is I stress about it and I stay up all night and I think about it and I prepare and then the next day I'm like, well, I'm just not gonna eat anything because I'm too nervous and then I feel like crap. So we don't wanna do that. So make sure you get good sleep, you um, dress to impress, uh, I'll get back to that one, but you also eat a good meal and stay hydrated. You'll just feel really good if you're hydrated, you have food in your system, you have fuel and you you got good sleep. You'll be able to think clearly. Um, dress to impress, I would say it's better to overdo it than underdo it. So obviously for us, we are only gonna be doing virtual interviews and they're gonna be live. So I would say from the waist up, just wear you know, business professional, that's the way to go. Also do your research. So when you come into an interview, you want to be informed about the job and the company you're interviewing with. And I'm actually going to touch on this a little bit later, but it really just shows your interest in the job and shows that 
this is something that you really want. Sometimes we can tell when someone interviews that where their plan B or C or D because they don't really do a lot of research and they don't really know much about the company. And that's not how we want to feel. It doesn't show the interest in the job. So make sure you know what makes the company unique and you know why you want to do the job. And for me, I there you can over prepare yourself to death, um, but I say prepare for potential questions. So I always prepare for these few. So tell me about yourself, and I'm going to touch on how to how to do that more later. Why you want to work for the company? Why you want to do that position? Your strengths and weaknesses, and examples of good and bad communication, collaboration, leadership, and the company's values. So for example, like we really value innovation and entrepreneurialism and growth. So we might ask you something around that, like tell me about a time you've had to lead a team or you've had to, you've been, um, you have to think of something innovative. And so if you really research the company, you'll start to see their values and get an idea of what they're looking for. And I think if you do these, like what I would do is write, like, tell me about yourself. And I'd write like, junior looking for for this type of opportunity blah 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 write bullet notes and I'd kind of walk around and like practice them casually or do it in the car when I'm driving that's always my go-to but we're not driving that much anymore so you want to sound like you practiced your answers but not rehearsed so Ken Drew do you have any any other comments on how to prepare for the interview you can yeah. go first. I'm moving the box yeah I'll, I'll, I'll just say I think um, something that Tara touched on on the last slide quickly, but it absolutely applies here. And I'll speak from personal experience. You're all different and unique, and we want to know why. So actually the skills and interests part, that's really important to me as trying to get to know you. I want to know what you're interested in. I want to know what your unique skill set is, because you all have something that's different and fun and interesting everybody's you know you know doing the same classes getting within a range similar grades and and extracurricular activities i want to know what makes you tick outside of all this stuff that's what i start relating to so if you have um you know something prepared that tells me why you're different from the other 20 people i'm about to talk to that's really really important and and yes doing your research big because it is very clear, you can't fake that. I'm telling you right now, I'm too smart for you. You, you. you have to have a little info about this firm, a little info about this position. Um, it is quite clear when someone's just kind of winging it. So really important point. Um, I wanna add that, that you won't, you can't necessarily have an answer for every single question immediately. Like I would say, don't hesitate to like, maybe take a pause, like a second to think about the question because if it's automated and you're just immediately answering every single question it's it's pretty surprising you know and like like you said personalizing it helps the interviewer will remember you and maybe consider oh i really like this particular thing about this person so yeah yeah I love that, Drew. Thank you both for, for sharing. Does anyone have any questions? Because I'm going to move into the ASIM interview part, and we're also going to have an interactive element, but I want you to feel like you can unmute yourselves. Hopefully, we've conveyed that we're, we're pretty chill. We're open to questions. We want to talk about it. So does anyone have any questions about how to prepare? No? Okay, cool. Well, we'll move on, and we'll have time for questions at the end as well. So, and I moved the, the box back to the right because there's no content that's the right. So if you guys see a gray box, I just needed to see your faces. It was too weird. So I'll move it out of the way if we need to. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on to acing the interview. So I wanted to start this with a little, little video of just maybe an example of not really the way to do an interview. And I'm sure most of you have seen this before, but let's take a look. Dad. Um, I need to Can you hear it or not? For the interviews, because oh. I don't have any fancy clothes. You go to my closet, you take whatever you need. You okay. too, Brennan. You guys got to look sharp. This is the most important day of our lives, Rock. okay? Okay, Dad. Well, Brennan, you certainly have had a lot of jobs. I'm a bit of a spark plug and a uh, human resources lady. <laughs> oh, oh no, it, it's actually, it's Pam. I'm sorry. Well, Pam. No, my name is Pam. Are you saying Pam or Pam? I'm saying Pam. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, who is this gentleman sitting behind you? Hello, Ms. Lady. I'm Dale. I'm Brennan's stepbrother, and I think I might be able to help with a Pan Pam dilemma. Yeah, that'd be great. Pam. 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 With There's an M. There's a D on the end. There's no D. It's Pam. It's like calm. Here, it's P. P A N M. 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 Two M. Two M. M. That was the confusion. No, there's just one M. I, oh, okay. I think we've had enough. Shut up for one second. Shut, 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 shut your mouth. I needed someone. Wait, to shut, your mouth. Shut, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. I'm sorry. What did You're you just say? You're just coming say? off stupid. I'm coming off as stupid. You're wearing tuxedos to a job that requires you to clean bathrooms. Please leave this office. We're done with this interview. Do we get any sort of souvenir? Get out of my office! All right, so I had to share that with you guys because it cracks me up. So does anyone want to share what's wrong with that interview? <laughs> There's a lot wrong. You can unmute yourself. You can chat. Um, I thought it was really funny. I also can't see the chat. I don't know what's happening, but um, let's see. That was funny. Thank you, Vinny. So. Yeah, I, I thought that was really funny. Obviously, that's, there's some clear don'ts in that, um, but that leads me into my next slide, which is interview tips and tricks. So we're gonna help you learn how to ace this and not be like stepbrothers. Um, and clearly, I couldn't get away from some of my favorite movies. This is Devil Wears Prada. If you have never seen that, go watch it right after this. It is amazing. So, um, first go alone. I saw that from Nicole. Yes, go to the interview by yourself. Do not bring your brother. Um, okay, I'm going to move you guys to the side. So some interview tips and tricks. So arrive to the interview 10 to 15 minutes early. So this is more for when you're in person in an interview. I would say come 10 to 15 minutes early. You can come up, you can wait in the lobby. I would honestly say 10 minutes any early. I mean, 15 is okay, but no more than that. Um, just because sometimes people are still getting ready, like the recruiters are still getting everything in place, putting on finishing touches, and they don't want you to see that. Um, also, for Zoom interviews, it's different. I would not come 10 to 15 minutes early. I would come three to five minutes early, probably more on the three side, just because sometimes the professionals will come early and they'll test their video. And if it's like too early, like maybe they pop in 15 minutes early to prep themselves and then they want to log off and like do tasks for like 10 minutes. If you're on there already, they'll be like, oh, okay, do I like start the interview now? Like I can't, like this is going to be a 45 minute interview. So just make sure to log on three minutes early. Also come in with confidence. This will change everything. So how do you do that? So I kind of put some sub bullets under that. So you can do power poses. I know that sounds so cheesy, but I used to do that at CSUN in the bathroom. I was standing there like this in the bathroom. So how you do it, you guys can look up TED Talks. There's so many, there's so many things on this, but you stand with your feet shoulder width apart. You put your hands on your hips, your chin up, you like elongate your spine and it helps you feel like I got this. Um, I think there are more power poses, but that's, that's really the one that I like took away from that. Also side note, if you, smile if you sit and smile for like two minutes which is a really long time but in my psychology class um, they told me it actually enhances your mood makes you happier even if you're just forcing it so if you had a bad morning just sit there and smile for two minutes and you'll feel better um, also don't put all of your eggs in one basket so what I mean by this is you know try like some people are so dead set on like I have to work at Armanino or I have to work at X Y and Z firm so I think that's really good. It's good if you know where you want to work, but also have, you know, you should try to interview at multiple places. And let's say that doesn't, that doesn't happen. You can, um, you just, you get an interview at one company. That's okay. I think this mindset is still really important of like, you know, this sounds so cheesy and very like hippy dippy of me, but it's going to work out how it's going to work out. You guys are going to end up what in a place that is right for you, no matter what. So if you interview with five firms and two of them give you, an interview amazing that's only two offers that you have to decide between instead of five potentially so you know and maybe you get one interview and you're it's not really for you and you're like that's okay next season i'm just gonna i'm gonna go for it and i'm gonna do things a little bit different and find where i'm supposed to fit so i think when you go in with that mindset it takes a lot of pressure off like i have to get this job so that works for me anyway also know your story and know your resume so this interview is about you. It's about you talking about yourself. It's also about you figuring out if this is the right fit for you. Like as much as we're trying to see if you're a fit, you're trying to figure out if this is a fit for you. So you need to know 
what makes you a great candidate, what you want, what you're looking for, how you can be an asset to the company. And also they'll ask you questions about your resume. So make sure it's like truthful, first of all. Second of all, make sure you just know it really well. And you should because you lived it. So um, kind of common sense, but really important. Also have a firm handshake. This doesn't really apply because we're going to be virtual, but if you're in person, make sure you have a firm handshake. Nothing worse, Drew and Ken can probably attest to this than like one of these. Um, don't know what that is. I don't know who taught you that, but you want to get it this part in the other person's whatever that is. I wish there was a name for that part of the hand, but you want to make sure it's tight, firm. Um, it shows that you're, you're serious. Also, you want to provide context and stories with your interview answers. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm going to talk about it in our interactive activity. But um, some people are like, oh, tell me about how you're a good communicator. And they're like, well, I'm, I just uh, really like talking to people. And then you're like, okay, and? <laughs> so you want to make sure that you provide more context and examples um, from your own life about your interview answers. You also want to keep them one to three minutes long. So sometimes we have people that interview that will talk about one thing for like five, six minutes. They're totally far beyond the point um, or the opposite way. They talk about it for 10 seconds and we're like, wait, there has to be more than that. So I would say one to three minutes is, is a good time frame. Also anticipate questions you may not expect. I'm going to ask Ken about that. I'll come back to that. Um, be aware of time. So try not to go over um, if, someone does a knock on the door if you're in person or if it's like only 30 minutes and you can kind of glance at your watch just make sure you're on time because someone might be after you also ask the interviewers genuine questions during and at the end of the interview so this is a conversation you don't have to be like like they're just people they're just people they've been in your spot um, they are open to questions you can just have a conversation and in a conversation questions come up you don't have to save them all to the end but at the end they might prompt you and be like do you have any questions for me or do you have any more questions for me and i think it's just important to have like three questions on deck that matter to you that are like genuine to you like um for example when i was recruiting i knew for sure i did not want to work like 100 hours a week um in busy season so i was like you know what does busy season look like and you don't want to say you know, I don't want to do this. So how is it like that? You know, do are am I going to have to do that? But you could say like, you know, I, I'm, I really value work life balance. Um, so what does busy season look like for you hours wise workload wise? How do you manage it? That's a question that sounds like you're really invested in. It's not like, Oh, well, Stuart told me to ask about the culture. So I'm going to ask like, is the culture good? What's it like? You know, we can tell when you're really interested and you have good questions that matter to you versus ones that you just kind of are like, well, I wrote these down. It's just like, whatever, just questions to have. Um, you also want to thank the interviewers for their time. So I want to go back to anticipate questions you may not expect. So Ken, I don't know if you have an example of like, I, I'm sure people, you ask people questions and it throws them off and they're like, oh my gosh, I was not prepared for that. So do you have an example of how someone handled that really well and what they did? Like you could obviously tell they didn't know, but <laughs> they handled it well. Yeah, I, I think quite frankly, uh, this has happened several times and it, they admitted right out of the gate, wow, that, that's a really interesting question. Let me think about that a second. They gathered themselves and then we're able to formulate a great response. Um, Drew is absolutely right. You can't anticipate every question. There are some standard things for sure, but every interviewer, including myself, including Drew, my other partners and colleagues, kind of have things that are important to them to gauge the interviewee. But I will give you all a little tip right now. If you ever, ever interview with my partner, Michael Bossy, He's got this one question that is ridiculous and it's totally unfair. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you right now. Don't tell him I told you, okay? He has literally asked the question as follows. If you had to figure out how many gas stations are in California, how would you go about figuring that out? Talk about a stumper. I mean, I wouldn't even know how to answer that question. So point is just literally just say that is a really interesting question i didn't think about that let me let me think about this formulate a response gather some steam and you're going to be able to, the, the brain will start kicking in 
Yeah, that's that's wow. Now I'm I can't stop thinking about how would I do that. I would freak <laughs> out if Michael Boss. <laughs> and and just so funny, like Tara. Um, t- Michael was not looking for the right answer. He was looking for how would you go about doing it. That's all he was trying to. How would how would you think through a a, a formula like that? Just wanted to see how that person's brain was uh, thinking. So it wasn't necessarily he looked for a new numerical answer. It was how would you go about doing it? That's what he wanted to find out. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a stumper. I hope you guys don't get that. But now you know. Um, Drew, do you have anything else you want to add in on tips and tricks? Um, Let's uh, in regards to the comment I thought in the chat power presence. Um, someone else may have a more of a power presence than you or whatever. I don't. I don't think you have to feel. The end of the day, you're gonna feel a. Wait, Drew. I I I, I think your audio is cutting out. Is that just me? I yeah, hear it like I, cutting in and out. I can hear it too. Is this maybe? Whoa! It's like a little like buzzing. Static. Yeah, it sounds better now. Nothing has happened. Anything different than I've, I mean, I've been there the whole time. The same. Nothing has happened this way. Um, could be Zoom. I'm not sure. Um. Hmm. It sounds better now. Um, if you're like a little closer, I think it helps. Okay, we'll continue like this then. Um, I'm just thinking that um, if you interview somebody different, um, I think it'll matter who the interview is going to be. Or who the, the Drew, I, wanna see I think. Happen. Can't hear you. Is, really? No, yeah. it's all. I think we say, here, Drew. Is this better? Yes. Really? Yes. A lot better. Okay. Yes. You know, Where? there's this B and O option at the top now, and it's different, but I didn't switch it before. That's interesting. Okay. All right. I was just trying to say that there are many numbers of types of interviewers and everybody's a different person. I would say be yourself no matter what. Don't try to accommodate for the personality that person is. I mean, one may have more of a power presence than someone else and maybe more or less intimidating. Um, I would just say no matter what, just be yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's really good. Thanks, Drew. Um, So, Okay, so I want to go into our activity, our interactive activity. So we'll be looking at the following questions and responses, see if the responses are good or could be better. So I was actually going to share the slides, but it doesn't really feel interactive with the slides on. So I am going to take them off and I'm going to read to you guys. So if you guys have cameras, turn it on. I don't care if you're in your pajamas. It's okay. Um, I'm in my pajama bottom, so there's my secret. So take take your put your video on. Okay, so I'm going to read you a question and an answer and you guys are going to tell me if it's good or could be better. So you can chat it in or unmute yourself or you can say like good and then this could be like could be better. Maybe we'll do that. Um, Okay. Oh no. It's still uh Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm going to look to the side for a second because I need to read. So question. Tell me about yourself. Are you guys ready? Okay, so this person says, I'm an accounting student, I'm a junior, I'm seeking an audit internship, and I would really like to do that, Armanino. Do you think that's good, or do you think that could be better? Could be better. Give us something. That could be better. Could be better, could be better. Okay, good job, you guys got it. Unfortunately, this is something I hear a lot, Um, a, a variation of this. Ken, when you do interviews, I'm sure, you hear something along the lines of like, just kind of where they're at right now. Um, so I like to take the approach and Ken and Drew, you guys can jump in of past, present and future. So when I was interviewing at CSUN, this is what I would say, this is an example. I said, I grew up in Santa Cruz my whole life. I was a competitive cheerleader for seven years. I also cheered in high school. Um, I, want to be a hairdresser my whole life so I majored in business management hoping to own a hair salon and you know I had to take accounting as part of that and I ended up really liking it I do well in it and I really enjoy it so after talking to some mentors and my professor I decided to change course now I'm uh, an executive in the accounting association I'm a treasurer Um, I'm a junior and I'm looking to pursue an audit internship at a mid-tier firm because I want that tight-knit culture um 
and yeah, that's kind of it. That's what I would say. So you give the past, which talks about, I talked about where I grew up, that I was a cheerleader, that I wanted to be a hairdresser. And like most accountants, I think Drew and Ken can attest to this, accounting kind of happens to you and you don't necessarily choose it. So there's usually a good story behind how you, how this happened, even if your mom was an accountant. That's good to share. Um, but you give a little bit of backstory, which it gives like nuggets for the professional to, to get to know you and to kind of start talking points off of. There were so many people that were like, my daughters are cheerleaders, or I grew up in Santa Clarita, my sister lives there, or I, I love doing hair, I wanted to do that too, we should start a makeup and hair salon. I was like, yeah, that's never happened. But you know, that always happened. And I was like, this is so cool. And then it would spark like different conversations. So you want to give a little backstory. Don't be afraid to talk about yourself a little bit. And then you get to the present. So you don't want to say I'm a junior, I'm an accounting student, like we know that you're applying for the job, you had to be an accounting student to get in, we know the position you're applying for. So you can give a little bit of a why, like, how did you end up here? Are you an executive? Are you in a fraternity? Like, do you, why do you want to choose Armanino? Like I said, something about the culture. That would be a good, a good answer. I don't know. Ken, Drew, do you guys want to chime in? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than um, interviewing a student, getting really short answers. And like for, for office hours, for instance, or on campus interviews, we usually have 30 minutes per student. And I'm looking at the clock going, it's only been seven minutes. It's only been 11 minutes. Oh my gosh, I'm not getting anything. Just elaborate a little bit, um, give a little bit of context and background that makes it interesting, flavors it up a little bit. And the best interviews are where I'm like, oh my gosh, it's already been 30 minutes. Crud, I didn't even get all my questions in, okay? I think you guys nailed it. Yeah, like that sounds that. good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, so we're gonna move on. We have three example questions and I, I realized I gotta hurry this up. So, okay, tell me about a time you've been innovated. So this person says, a couple of years ago, I worked for a car dealership and they did a lot of processes manually. For example, they were FedExing invoices for services done under warranty to the company's headquarters. And I suggested that we start faxing them instead. I proposed this option because it keeps the customer's information relatively safe Save this money on shipping costs and save this space because we don't need to keep the paper copies of invoices on hand. To my knowledge, they, this is still a process they do to this day. So do we think that's good or could be better? Good? Okay. That's good. Yes, it is good. So, <laughs> yeah, so that is good. So you talk about a problem that was there, how you proposed to fix it. You gave the company a why. And it actually got fixed. And then, I mean, a bonus is they still do it to this day. Um, is faxing the best way to do it now? Don't know. But you know what? They still do it to this day. So obviously you did something right. So I think that that's, that's a good answer. So see how we, you don't just say one thing and just say, yeah, I changed this process at my job. And you're like, okay, what else? Um, there's like a little bit of a story involved and you give more context, which is what I was talking about before. So. Here's another one we ask a lot. Why do you want to do audit and why at Armanino specifically? So sometimes we break those into two questions, but I put it into one. So this person says, I'm really outgoing and I've heard audit is for people who are social, just like me. Um, some, because you get to interact with clients regularly in person. Also, I heard that Armanino has a great culture. Please pause with our commercial break at the moment. I think I will add. Time. I will add to that though that tax people are not boring. I know a lot of <laughs> personable, excitable tax people in my, my team. For example, we definitely have a great time. We you, you know we go out and we do all sorts of stuff, and we're very we're not boring. You know, timid like you know. Oh, I can't vibe with these people. Believe me, you'd be surprised. I can attest to that. And just don't say why you're either going into audit or accounting because you're good at math. Don't say that. We <laughs> do simple math, I swear. Mm -hmm. It's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, you guys. It is not hard. Um, I'm sorry, my AirPod just died. So I apologize. I have my little 
uh, takeout headset on. So we're going to roll with that. But um, yeah, no, that is super important. Thank you, Ken and Drew, for pointing that out, because that's what I want to point out. I cannot tell you you how many times I hear people say well I'm super outgoing and that's why I want to do audit your girl is outgoing as heck and did tax okay you can crush it in tax if you're outgoing and you have to talk to clients all the time also that's not a good example of why you want to do audit you could want to go work at in and out because you're outgoing because you talk to clients every single day customers you want to have a real like something where you thought it out like they review financial statements and help prepare them for the company and that's something that I really enjoy I like writing and I know there's a lot of writing involved in the job so I think that's that would be a great fit for me Ken I hope I got that right I just did an audit internship so I don't know the job <laughs> but I tried my best um, so I think right. okay good so I think that shows I did my research I know what the position is I know it's not just clients I mean consultants and tax people talk to clients clients as well. Also, when people say, well, my friend told me about Armini now, and they said it's great. That really shows you did not do any research on your own. If you say like my friend told me and that really sparked my interest in Armini now and then I researched the website and I saw you guys are really big in the nonprofit sector and I actually volunteered a nonprofit and that's where my passions lie. So I think our values would align in that way. That's way better. You know, you, your friend helped you and then you did some research. So I think that's a better way to rephrase your answer. Okay. Last question. I see that you were the captain of your cheer team in high school. Tell me more about that. So our interviewers will ask a mix of behavioral and traditional interview questions. So behavioral was like the, tell me about a time you've been innovated. Traditional is more like they're looking through your resume and they're like, Oh, you were the captain of the cheer team. Tell me more about that. It's kind of hard because you're like, where do I even start? Like, this is open-ended and what, what do you want to know? So this person said, sure, I was responsible for creating the routines for pep rallies, the, ch the cheers we were going to do at football games, and the agendas for our practices. I had to work with many different personalities and skill levels to make sure we were prepared for game nights and rallies, which was tough at first, but I made it work by playing to each cheerleader's strengths. For example, if one of the cheerleaders didn't like to tumble, which is aka gymnastics for cheerleaders, I would have her stunt, which is throwing people in the air and pump up the crowd instead. So do we think that's good or do we think that's just okay? Good. Okay. I'm glad you guys said that because all of these answers are my personal experience. <laughs> I wasn't the captain of the cheer team, but I was a cheerleader and I did work at a car dealership. So I'm glad you guys like those answers. But yeah, it's good because you say what you were responsible for, and then you talk about a challenge that you had without being prompted to talk about that and how it was tough at first, which makes you human, and then how you overcame it and what strategies you used. So I think that that's a good answer and it gives context and it's well-rounded. So that's it for my little interactive activity. But Ken, um, Drew, did you guys want to add any final thoughts on just how to ace the interview based on your experience? I think, I think Drew nailed it. Just be yourself. We, we want to get to know you and don't try to conform. Uh, again, Drew, Drew really nailed it. Don't, don't try to conform to my personality or Drew's personality or anybody else there. You bring a unique skill set and personality that nobody else on the planet knows or has. So we want to know what that is because we want to be able to uh, roll in that unique skill set into our group somehow, some way. So just be able to communicate who you are as a person. That's going to go a long way. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, definitely. A firm is your new home. If you, when you find it, um, you're going to spend just as much time at least at work than at home. And you want to feel comfortable with the people you're working with and the place you work at. So. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. But, like Ken said, and Drew said, be yourself because yeah. And that's kind of hard to know because you're sometimes you're like, where's, where's the boundary, but feel free to talk about skills and interests or your past. Like, um, don't talk about anything inappropriate, but honestly, you guys know that line. So it's okay to make it a little bit more personal. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again, temporarily. I just have a few more slides. So I hope you can see my screen because I can't see you. So can someone unmute themselves and say yes, if you can see it? Yes, okay. yes. good to see you. Sweet, okay, so what do you do after the interview? So you aced it, you're a rock star, what do you do now? So 
Next steps. So I would say ask the interviewers or the recruiter about next steps. For example, when you'll hear back on the second round interview, if, if that is happening with that firm or an offer. Um, so like for us, we're not doing second round interviews interviews. That's why I put that caveat. Um, we're just doing one round and then offers. So I will say sometimes interviewers don't know all the details, um, but the recruiter does. So feel free to ask them. This also just shows that you're interested, um, which is a good thing. So also follow up with interviewers via email, either the same day or the next day at the latest. So I would say, yeah, don't, don't push it past after one day. Uh, in addition, don't be afraid to add a personal touch like a written thank you card. So I've gotten some of these in the mail and they are so sweet and I display them in my office like I'm just so proud. Um, but I really love this touch and obviously I would say maybe um, email is best for the virtual setting because a lot of us aren't in the office and um, it would be weird if you're like, can I have your home address for me to send this to you? So maybe just do that um, when interviews are being held in person again and people are in the office. Um, but that I love that personalized touch. Also connect with the company and the interviewers on social media and include a message so that this is for LinkedIn. So you can connect with the company on Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, LinkedIn, etc. And then now we come to offers. So what to consider when you have one or multiple offers and then what to consider when you need to keep looking for the right fit. So when you have one or multiple offers um, afterwards, it's important to think about, okay, do the company's values line up with mine? Also, does the position line up with my expectations? So maybe you just wanted to do audit for like five clients. Like that's just, I don't know how you would know that, but maybe that's what you wanted. And this company, you would have to do audits for maybe 60 to 80 per year. And so maybe that's just not what you expected, or maybe it's a smaller firm and you have to do tax as well. So it's important to think about if it lines up with what you're looking for. Also, does this company or position align with my short-term and long-term goals? So hopefully you've thought about that ahead of time. Um, if you haven't, I would say think about it right now, what your short and long-term goals are, and just see if, if that would line up. And also, who can I talk out the decision with? So I think this is something I'm a talker. So I love to talk to my parents and talk to my professor and to Stuart and to my other friends in the accounting association and be like, hey, this is kind of what I'm considering. Like, what do you think? No one can tell you what to do, but people like your parents or your best friend and maybe a professor that you've gotten tight with, they really know you. So they can sometimes help you push you in the right direction. So um, if you're not a talker, I would say just write pros and cons. Like that can never hurt. Like write, write a pros and cons list and just compare it and think about, okay, is this, is this the right move for me? Um, moving on to when you need to keep looking for the right fit. So this can be if you didn't get an offer or if you got offers and they just don't feel like the right fit. So um, I would think about what can my new recruiting strategy be? to find the right fit. So um, you've been recruiting, you're going to meet the firms, but maybe you need to tweak it a little bit to find out what you're looking for. So how do you do that? Well, I think first of all, it's important to backtrack and think, what are my values? So what really matters to me when it comes to a career? Wh uh, what do I envision my career looking like in the short and the long term? Um, and those, those two questions will really help you figure out, okay, who am I, what am I looking for? And it'll help you develop your recruiting strategy. And also what skills should I enhance to make myself shine? So, um, there was this one girl that interviewed with us and I knew her really well. And, and she didn't, she interviewed, I think one year didn't get a second round interview. And then the next year she was interviewing and I was like, look, you have really good good experience and you're awesome. I think you just need to tweak it to know how to make yourself shine like the gem you are. So I think sometimes we, um, as, as students, you guys don't know how to convert your experience or like your volunteer experience or your work experience into trans transferable skills for the current position you're applying for. So um, like my example with the cheer team, like you can totally like that was collaboration that was playing to people's strengths, which you have to do in accounting. You work with so many different personalities. You have to work in teams. You have to work with people from staff to partner and then clients that are from all different levels. So um, any skills that you can are like trying to figure out how to make your experience into transferable skills is key. And also maybe you just need to sharpen up your communication skills or, or something. So just looking inward and seeing like, okay, what do I need to improve on to show them how, what a catch I am is, um, is important. 
and who slash what can I help or can I use as a resource to help me reach my goals? So maybe it's getting a mentor. Maybe it's talking to Stuart or talking to the executives of the accounting association because usually they have jobs locked in or something. So asking them for their advice or um, your parents or, or something. So yeah, um, knowing who you can lean on and use as a resource is a good skill because you'll do that for the rest of your career for sure. So um, I, that. That's actually at the end of our presentation. So I just wanted to see Ken and Drew if you had anything to add into like what to consider when you have offers. Well, you know, it, it, God bless if you're in a position where you have multiple offers and lots of different choices. That that's fantastic. Um, definitely uh, be careful about coming off as arrogant. I've seen that before. Kind of Armanino, what what are you going to do for me? type of attitude. Just, just be careful with that. Be respectful to everybody. Um, show them that, you know, you, you do have uh, interest in them, but you also have options. We respect that. We love that. No problem. Because um, we want to show you why we feel we're the best, right? So um, no problem communicating to us that you are, hey, I'm, I'm talking to other firms. I have several um, firms that I'm interested in. That's totally okay. Don't act like Armanino's the only game in town. We, we know we're not. Uh, we think we're the best, but that's a personal opinion. Um, so yeah, go ahead and communicate that. That's not a problem. And if, let's say, uh, my parting comment, if you don't get, whether it's from Armanino or anywhere else, let's go to the opposite end. You don't get any offers. I recommend reaching out to the people you interviewed with asking what you can do better next time. I've had one student do that, that uh, this person had interviewed him several times with us and other firms as well, did not get an offer or any other offers and came back to me and said, I wanna do better next time, what could I do? And I, was, I remembered this person, I was able to give uh, feedback and they took it and you know, what they've done from here, I'm not totally sure, but that was appreciated, you know, the humility of, I didn't do so hot. Tell me what I can do better. I want to learn from this. That's all we can do from these opportunities is learn. Karen, I have a question. I love that feedback idea because it's definitely helpful to know what you did and didn't do for potentially the next interview or the next level at that firm, for example. Um, do you recommend asking that potentially at the end of the interview? Like, do you have any feedback for me on how the, uh, I conducted this interview, for example, or would you, like you said, wait until after the fact? I personally would wait. I, I wouldn't want to give that kind of feedback right off the cuff. I'm still processing answers and, and forming an opinion to uh, the, the individual I'm interviewing. I don't, I don't necessarily want to give, you know, goods or bads, you know, right out of the gate there. I would give wait until, there. yeah. yeah wait until there was uh, uh, you know, a reason for it, that they didn't get the results they were looking for, then let's figure out why. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. And two side notes that I thought of is when you're asking for you know, feedback, a lot of times people will email me, for example, like if they, if they didn't move forward in the process, they'll be like, what can I do better? And it's hard because I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't in the interview. And um, this is a whole process. I don't make the decision. Not one person makes the decision. So reaching out to your interviewers, like Ken said, is, is a really good idea because they, they talk to you. Um, also, just know if you don't get an offer, it does not mean that you suck or you're awful or you're bad. Um, as a mid-tier firm, we just hire less than bigger, bigger firms just in general. So we have <clears throat> fewer positions available and the same amount of people applying. So sometimes we... I mean, I'm giving you inside scoop. Sometimes we have to, you know, say no to really good people. And it does, I do not want you guys to and to get that news and be like, wow, I just suck and I should just not continue recruiting. That is not the case at all. You just haven't found your fit, maybe, or you are a fit for Armani. Now you just need to tweak your interview skills to make yourself shine. Like I said, I think we have someone in Woodland Hills, Ken, Harry is what people always talk about, but I think he interviewed like two or three three times. And finally on the third one or second one, they're like, we have to have him. But the first time he didn't get it and they love him, like could not live without him to this day. So it's like, you know, sometimes you just gotta, you're, you're, you just have to tweak your interview skills, try again, or maybe a different firm's a better fit. So I just don't want you guys to get, to get crushed or anything. Cause that's not what that means at all. So I know we have five minutes. Um, 
I'm glad I finished on time, but I want to see if anyone had any questions. I think Daphne, you raised your hand, I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so they just mentioned that you are not going to be um, in the interview if we get selected for the interview. So I guess my question is, are we going to, or if we get uh, an interview, um, are we going to be interviewed by the person of of the office we applied or it's going to be just general? I, I, I'm asking this because I want to prepare my question. And if I feel like the person is going to interview me, it's going to be from the office um, I'm applying to, like maybe my questions are going to be different. Yeah, that's a good question. So actually this year, I think we're taking a more national approach where we're going to have just all audit, audit partners or or tax partners, senior managers, et cetera, they might cross interview for different offices, but we are one firm and we operate as one firm. So um, I, I understand location questions might be different, um, which you can totally ask me or I can put you in touch with someone who works at your location. But for the most part, like the partners think, th think the same and have the same values in, in every office. So hopefully your questions don't differ too much. Ken, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we interview students from all geographies and um, you know we're, we're pretty familiar with all of our Southern California offices how they function size so we can answer questions within our region um, and even somewhat you know for instance Northern California offices I know a fair amount about um, so I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't stop any questions Daphne for any specific office questions we we either can find it uh, we either have that answer or we can get it to you after. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Justin. Yeah. Um, Justin, I see your hand is up. So you can Hi, go. Tara. Hi. Yeah. Um, so I actually really appreciate how you shared your high school experience and the interview process. Because like something that I've been finding myself doing is I would mention how I'd help teachers in high school. And that kind of has been something I still do today, helping people. And I like to relate that in interviews. So making that high school experience relevant is it's I really appreciate that it could be relevant. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think any experience like high school and up is totally okay. I mean, that's a leadership role at a young age. So that's, it's good to talk about. So yeah, I love, love that you're doing that too. Thanks for that, that comment. I love that. Of course. <laughs> All right, Karis, I hope I'm saying that right. I see your hand also. Hi, uh, I just had a quick question. So say you have, two firms that you're really interested in would like be open to offers from either one gives you the offer first and you are waiting to hear from the other how would you guys prefer to hear from the potential candidate that they're basically waiting to hear from another firm before they decide yeah if, if you get an offer from us you better take it no i'm just kidding. i'm just kidding <laughs> Um, no, that's, that, that's okay. Again, respectable that you want to have a full set of options available to you. That's okay. Um, all, all I would say is, you know, if it's us, let's just use us as an example. We've given you an offer. You're waiting for one or two other firms. Just thanking us for the offer, saying, you know, I want to make the best decision possible. I've got a couple of the firms that their due date is X. I'm going to make a, an informed decision on or about that date. And I'm, I'm very appreciative of what you've you know, given to me. It's, it's really important. Something like that. No problem. That's great. Yeah, I agree. And Karis also, uh, just so you know, all of us talk. So the big four kind of sets like the deadlines and they kind of, they do their interview schedule and the mid tier firms talk after and we make sure that all of our deadlines are within the same time frame and our offers are maybe they're not exactly like perfect but they're within the same time frame so um, hopefully that's not an issue but you can also just say like hey you know i have an offer for this other firm and it expires like do you have an, an eta on on when i'll expect to hear back from your firm so i think that's perfectly fine um yeah, thanks for that question. I think, Jason, I'll get to you in one second. I saw Vanuhi's the, the question on strengths and weaknesses. Um, hints or answers. Well, I would say you can really get the strengths from when you're researching the company and their values. So if they really value, and we say it in our presentations all 
multiple time, communication, collaboration, change management, innovation, entrepreneurialism, like all those things. And most companies are looking for relatively the same thing. So I would say try to base your strengths around that. I know we're at time go hard. So I'm trying to make it quick, but um, yeah, I would say just base your strengths off that and come up with stories for why you're good at that thing. So don't just say like, I'm organized. You want to have like a story as to why. Um, Drew, were you going to Comment. Yeah, I was literally typing out an answer. I was literally just typing. Um, I would say it depends on you. I would write these down. Maybe an example would be an anecdote of a time you were working on a group project and you were leading the group by assigning people, delegating the work and checking in on how that work is coming along and stuff like that. Uh, just an example. But yeah, there's many scenarios, right? Depending on your experiences. So yeah. And, and real quick on the weaknesses part, you always make weaknesses a strength. One of my weaknesses is I tend to take on too much because I have the attitude if I want to get something done right, I, I think I do a good job and I tend to just take on too much. Mm -hmm. That would be something where, okay, this person's a real go-getter and they want to they wanna do something right. Always make your weakness a strength. Yeah, that's so true. And I would also say with your weaknesses, um, like acknowledge why they're a weakness, but really like deep down like the company could benefit from from like you know it's not like the end of the world it's not like you're like well I'm late to everything like that's that's not good you don't want to say that um but yeah and a lot of times companies won't ask your strengths and weaknesses but preparing the stories will help cover your bases for other interview questions so um I know Jason had a question but Gohar I I have like two minutes but I don't know if Ken and Drew you have to hop off but I want to answer the questions if we can. We, yeah, we were going to take Jason as our last question, I believe, and then close it up from there. Perfect. Jason, uh, go ahead. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, it's a little low, but we can hear you. Okay, well, uh, first of all, thanks for, you know, coming and representing your firm. Uh, my question was for interviews. Ken was talking about not being too cocky and thinking, like, this firm needs me. Is there, like, a, a too humble that like you probably wouldn't like in an interview? Um, I'm not sure I've had it too humble. Um, <laughs> I guess it's possible. Um, hey, I love self-deprecation like anybody else, but you, you don't need to do that in an interview. Uh, humility is great, um, but have a little confidence that, that backs it up as well. Um, you definitely don't want to sound, maybe this is more your question, Jason, don't sound desperate. I've got to have this job, please. I've got to have it. You know, that, yeah. that's no good. So, um, just, you know, humility is great. Just have a little confidence behind that. Thank you.